this is Leila from Radakat. I'm in the second uh, video about data visualization from the book Storytelling with Data. The interesting discussion that uh, today I have uh, from the book is talking about iconic memory. So iconic memory is, is related when we uh, respond and react very fast and we can in a one glance we can check something and grab a number from the bunch of number that we can see. This comes from our ancestor, they're going for hunting, so they need to react and respond very fast. So that's what it actually allows us for having a great uh, sight and a speed of response to what happens around us. So this is an example of that. So uh, we use this iconic memory actually help us to identify some pre-attentive attribute. Uh, if you look at these digits, uh, we can find, for example, if we count one, two, uh, three, four, five, and six, three different three digits, but I need to work hard to find them. But if I use some pre-attentive attribute that related to my iconic memory, with a one glance, I can understand and find six three digits in this picture. So it's actually, it's helped my uh, iconic memory to better find it. In another example that uh, actually I steal from Reza uh, kind of presentations is about the uh, chart uh, column, uh, actually table chart that we have. So it's always very hard to find the biggest number and we always try to go, go forth and here to find them. So we use the conditional formatting in Power BI to actually help our iconic memory to better find these uh, actually numbers. So it's actually we use color or sometimes uh, size and the other to make our iconic memory to better get the information. Uh, another memory that we have is short term memory that always keep about uh, has a limitation. It always able to keep four chunk of visual or five different values. If you heard, maybe you heard that for example, if you want to evaluate, uh, create a survey, it's better to be a number between one to five. If it's been between one to 10, it's, not, it's very hard for audience and for the people who participate to answer questions. Same in the visual aspects. For example, the chart that I provide here is very hard to find out what is the actually kind of that. So I need to read everything, rainbow distribution, uh, number one stand for red to 10 or darker purple. So it's very hard to find out which one is higher um, number, which is lower number. So it's better to be lower number of the color and with a color that actually people know about that. For example, red always stands for kind of the bad signal and green or blue for a good signals. And it shouldn't be that much. Even if it's legend, it shouldn't be 10 legend. It's really distracting for people to go and back uh, through the legend and find it. So this is another one. And of course we have a long-term memory that's combination of the what we have. So what we do actually, we have some visual uh, perception that actually uh, is help our uh, iconic memory to better communicate and actually uh, kind of we can use them to create a better visualization. So uh, these pre we call them pre-attentive features that actually enable our audience to see what we want to see. So it's actually we use that one. So the first thing is proximity. So it's actually, that means that every object that close to each other uh, together, we consider them as a group. So it's actually, you can see, we can set these three dots close to each other, four are close to each other, and these five are close to each other. Other. Also, we have a similarity. So, uh, yeah, as you can see here, for example, the, when they are have a same shape, we kind of said, okay, they are close to each other, but also they have different uh, kind of the shape and size and orientation. So you can uh, distinguish between them. 
Or sometimes we can say we physically enclose some parts of that. So we provide a border on the visual and we kind of uh, make an assumption that these information are so close to each other, even in a matrix like this. Or for example, you can see the best example can be forecasting in a time series that actually providing a border means that this part is actually uh, forecast of the data and this part is actual data another one is actually continuity so here is that some dash but oh it's actually when we look at as a first look we find it as a circle or here is a uh, some bars what the uh, first thing that comes to our mind is a bar chart so actually that's uh, we call it continuity or that we find a recognizable sh shape based on whatever we see before so we able to distinguish them and finally about the connection so for example you see the connection between the two objects even the connection doesn't exist you can uh, your mind naturally create this connection and is actually uh, is provide uh, inside that these dots and these numbers are connected to each other so uh, we use all of these things so we have some pre-attentive iconic memory that can be uh, kind of we can use these benefits to better visualization so orientation of the visual if one of them is different from others can be a pre-attentive and uh, attract the uh, audience attention shape le line length line width if we enclose added mark curvature, create a kind of the curve or not, size, color, motion, and all of them is actually are uh, help us actually to quickly pick up difference in our visualization. So this is kind of the uh, what that we have, we can use it in our visualization to create a better actually visualization based on these things. So in this example, I'm going to kind of use some of pre-attentive visual. If you remember from my previous video, I showed that how we can remove the noise or clutter to make visual more creative. So and more kind of attractive to the user and going right to the straight, uh, straight to the point. Here I'm going to talk about the scenario that actually we want to uh, audience pay more attention to some things so this is kind of the different aspects from there so here i'm going to use some pre-attentive symbol to doing that so this is my uh, actually uh, data that i have so first of all to create that i put everything to be very uh, kind of put everything to be kind of the gray background so nothing is especially flashy here you couldn't see anything focus in the second steps i'm going to uh, make bold and a different color for the two line but the axis they are the we are kind of has a color that is gray that's so similar to the background color is not emphasis on the data here the only thing that he has emphasis is the line and his label in the second step i add some label but again you see there are too much label and is make it a bit noisy or have lots of clutter so this is not the things that we are going to do so uh, i want to pay attention of the user to the kind of the zigzagging of the data that is going up and down but putting all of the labels make it as actually a bit kind of distracting and so what i'm going to do in the next step i'm going to just put the uh, label for some parts so you see that here is actually with a different color with making the size of the line a bit bigger for putting some label for some parts of the data and not putting for the other kind of um, differentiating between them i'm trying to uh, provide attention to the specific parts of the visual to better tell a story and kind of to uh, guide the audience to what i'm trying to say so this is an example of the using a pre-attentive uh, 
features in here thanks so much for watching this video i hope that's be useful and i totally recommend again to uh, see the books uh, there are some other interesting point over there thanks so much